In this video, we're using Microsoft Mathematics 4.0 um, to do this trig investigation. For an overview of the actual investigation, see the activity page uh, summary using autograph. That shows you what you should do for this entire investigation. This is mainly aimed at just how to use the new Microsoft Mathematics 4.0 released in January 2011. You can download it for free for here, from here, from this website. That will take you here and download. When you open it, it looks like this. You've got a calculator, a worksheet and a graphing sheet. We're going to graph and we're going to have a look at these two investigations where we're changing the value of A. So 2 sin x, 4 sin x, 3 sin x. And we're also going to have a look at when we change the Bx, the value of B. So sine 2x, sine 3x, sine 4x, etc. So I go to graphing. I type in y equals A sine x and y equals sine brackets bx. Okay, then I press graph and it will graph both of those and take me to the graphs control panel. Here's the graphs control panel. Now, a few things to note. Uh, they've put the scale on the outside of the grid, not on the axes as we're used to in mass. So if you want to see what the scale corresponds to, you have to look on the outside. That is minus one on the x-axis. That is 0 0.034. It doesn't look like a wave, because we're handling degrees here and the range isn't quite what we would want it to be. So let's make that minus 360 to 360 and minus 6 to 6. So you have to click on plotting range to change the window axes. OK, now it looks like our traditional wave. Both values by default of A and B are set to 1. So A is set to 1 and B is set to 1. So they're both sine x at the moment. That's great because we want to see, um, we want to keep a sine x there so we can see the difference as we vary the value of a in this equation first. That's highlighted, so I'm changing this equation. Uh, I can change the boundaries of this slider, so I want that to go really from minus 5, tab, across to 5, and I've put a 6. And now as I slide that, we can see how it's changing. So how is that changing? Uh, question to ask yourself, what changes, what stays the same? What changes, what stays the same? You need to find the maximum and minimum points. Now, if I set that to 3, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard as well to be more precise. Um, you might be mistaken thinking 1, 2, 3. Well, that's 3, and that doesn't look like 3, the maximum. But unfortunately, this software often chooses quite complicated scales, more to do with the space of the screen here than, than user-friendly ones. So you can see that's 4.402. Uh, you're going to have to use a trace function in this software to really know what the coordinates are. There it goes automatically. If I click on it, it stops. And if I click and hold down the left mouse button, I can just slowly move that around the curve and sure enough see that the maximum y value is 3 when I've got a equal to 3. So y equals 3 sine x, the maximum is 3, and the minimum is minus 2.92. Can we get it smaller than that? We can, minus 3. And what about the x-intercepts? Again, it uses an uncomfortable scale, um, but it looks like that's minus 180. But we can't tell exactly. Let's just set that back to 1. Because a nice feature of this software is you can get up a worksheet at the same time. So if I set B now, I'm, just, I'm going to set that to 2. So we're looking at the, the next transformation effect uh, on that graph there. Um, we can see that... It's got x-intercepts, but it's very difficult to see what those are because the scale here is from 0 to minus 256. I could zoom in. If I just double-click, that zooms me in. Um, and I can see the scale is 64 for 4 squares. So each one's going up in 16s. Not easy to calculate with. So again, um, I can trace. And then I can drag that really quickly to the first intercept in the negative section after zero and it looks like it's minus 92 but I, I can't really tell because I can't get exactly on the x-intercept minus 92 minus 89 so what you can do click on worksheet and I can have the calculator at the same time and I can try sine it looks like that's meant to be 90 and we're in the we've set it to 2 so 2 times 90 that should give me 0 if that is an intercept and sure enough, it is zero. So it's quite nice that I can draw that up. And the last function is you can export this to Word to save your files after. So export to Word. Um, and there's also an option to save it as an MPG. So I could just say graphs and save. And there's also an option up here to save it to uh, an MPJPG file. I'll show you that another time. 